Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Georgia community praises FAA for proposed FAR Part 23 changes. The International Aerobatic Club announces Air Venture 2016 theme. Boeing 737 MAX 8 goes international for flight testing. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's May 4th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. On the eve of an FAA public hearing in College Park, Georgia, regarding the FAA Part 23 Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, a coalition of general aviation leaders applauded the FAA's efforts to improve safety and make it easier to bring new products to market for the light general aviation sector. The NPRM is a result of the Small Airplane Revitalization Act that was signed into law in 2013 and the general aviation organizations strongly encouraged the agency to finish its work on the issue by the end of this year. In March, the FAA issued the proposed rule which removes current overlay prescriptive design requirements and replaces them with performance-based airworthiness standards. The NPRM also recognizes the use of consensus-based standards to establish acceptable methods of compliance for specific designs and technologies. Consensus-based standards developed under the ASTM protocols have been in use since 2004 in the light sport aircraft industry, and this certification concept will be welcomed into other areas of aircraft and components certification. The International Aerobatic Club has announced its theme for EAA Air Venture 2016 along with their plans for an exhibit during Air Venture. The 2016 theme will be Grassroots to the Top of the World and the exhibit will provide an overview of the Aerobatic Club and a, provide a menu of choices that are available to members and enthusiasts for becoming involved in aerobatics. The club was founded in 1970 with the goal of promoting grassroots aerobatics. Their goal was to bring aerobatics to the local and regional areas through chapters and regional competitions. They have also provided guidance to those who wish to learn aerobatics to improve their pilot skills and to gain the self-confidence and ability to control their aircraft in all flight regimes. The International Aerobatic Club Pavilion is located adjacent to the Air Venture Air Show flight line. After the break, Boeing 737 MAX completes high altitude takeoff and landing testing. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The Boeing 737 MAX 8 has marked a key achievement after completing high-altitude flight testing in La Paz, Bolivia. It's the first international trip for the 737 MAX flight test fleet. The airport's 13,300-foot altitude tested the MAX's capability to take off and to land at high altitudes. Boeing's Keith Leverkuhn said, the engines and other systems perform well, as expected, under extreme conditions. That's exactly what we wanted to see. Boeing reports that flight testing for the 737 MAX is on schedule, with three test airplanes having completed more than 100 flights combined. The company says the fourth and final test airplane will make its first flight in the coming weeks. Boeing says the program remains on track for the first delivery in the third quarter of 2017. With some 2,000 Aerial TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. 
Here's a look at one of our favorite Errol TV classic episodes. Well, it's got a big, fat, straight wing. And, you know, we're limited, just like World War II airplanes were. You know, it couldn't go supersonic because they had flat bottom wings. They didn't have laminar flow wings till the Mustang came around. And this is a flat bottom wing. So the A-10 ground attack airplane would never make it as a star in a Top Gun movie because it lacks the graceful line of supersonic fighter, but to troops on the ground, it deserves a special award. In this video, A&N's Jim Campbell gives you background about this amazing single-purpose warplane. After these messages, biplanes and triplanes will fill the sky at Air Venture 2016. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. Now Bree is going to take us around the patch. Thanks, Christopher. Airplanes reaching back to the earliest days of military aircraft will be in the air and on the ground at AirVenture 2016. This summer, EAA marks the centennial of World War I aviation, which was a time of amazing innovation. Esterline Corporation has announced the appointment of Michel Pavin to the position of president of its avionics systems business group. This includes Esterline CMC Electronics and the newly acquired Simulation Visual Systems, which features the Triality Display products. Airbus Helicopters has handed over the first two of five military multi-role H-145M helicopters to the Royal Thai Navy. This marks an important milestone in the H-145M program on its way to the final acceptance and entry into service in Thailand. Defense Secretary Ash Carter announced last week that the President has nominated Air Force Vice Chief of Staff General David L. Goldfein to be the 21st Chief of Staff of the U.S. Air Force. He succeeds General Mark A. Welsh III. The National Air Transportation Association has named Saran Wijayar Wadana, who is Chief Operating Officer of Alorion Aviation, as Chairman of its Air Charter Committee. NATA says Saran is a strong advocate for NATA and has served on the committee for nearly a decade. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Back to you, Christopher. Thanks, Bree. Honeywell Aerospace is working with NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center to study the most effective way to visually inform pilots flying supersonic jets about incipient sonic booms as they approach the speed of sound. Honeywell recently flight tested new cockpit displays that help pilots see sonic booms before they happen so they can reroute and reduce the effects of aircraft noise over populated areas. By predicting sonic boom footprints, Honeywell says this technology will remove a key roadblock to speed up the introduction of supersonic travel and it will support one of NASA's goals to modernize flight. Early in 2015, Honeywell was awarded a two-year contract as part of NASA's commercial supersonic technology project to aid in overcoming the issue of sonic booms. In their first year under the contract, Honeywell and NASA have designed and developed predictive software and display technology that has been successfully tested in flight over commercial airspace. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry organizations and associations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. From the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.